Good morning to all. Good morning, sir. It's already eleven forty seven twenty seven. What is your Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Ravind Pandey here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
Welcome all. Uh, this is Justin Thomas, Head of Department Chemistry, IIT Roorkee. I am. Uh, it's my privilege to welcome all of you for this webinar series. This series is mainly intended to familiarize our fresh faculty colleagues to the national chemistry audience, and all our new faculty members have agreed to give a presentation in this series. We are having six presentations in this series covering three days. In the morning session today, we are having a presentation by Professor Nyanamani Elimalai. He will be presenting his research on asymmetric catalysis. I welcome all once again for this webinar series. I hope that we will have a pleasant learning throughout this webinar series. I request all the audience to be patient, listen to the speaker and raise questions after the presentation is over. The presentation may last for 45 minutes. And we have a huge response from the participants. We have around 400 registered participants covering all the three days and six sessions. So we hope that you know we will not have a problem in conducting this one due to the overload of bandwidth and other things. And we also have a YouTube live of this event. In case you are having trouble in joining the meeting through the link, you can always listen to the YouTube live. With this introduction to the webinar series, I would like to now invite Professor 
Ramakrishna Pedindi, who is the chairperson for the first session, to introduce the speaker of the session. Uh, thank you, Professor Justin Thomas. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, now, I, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Gnanamani Uyumalai, the uh, first speaker of this series. Uh, professor Gnanamani is currently an assistant professor of organic chemistry at IIT Roorkee. He completed his master's program in chemistry at Madurai Kamraj University, Madurai, Tamil Nadu, and later moved to Pondicherry University, Pondicherry, where he obtained his PhD degree in April 2000. Fellowship. Ah. Yeah. Uh, developing Country Fellowship at the Institute of Chemistry, Chinese Academy of Sciences, where he worked on asymmetric organocatalysis uh, with Professors Sanjong and Cheng. In November 2014, he was awarded a Fulbright Fellowship jointly sponsored by India and the United States, enabling him to pursue further postdoctoral studies at Stanford University. At Stanford, he worked in Professor Barry M. Trost Group from January 2015 to March 2020 on a variety of different transition metal catalyzed reactions. While at Stanford, Dr. Gnanamani also worked with Professor Richard N. Jare with uh, uh, he de uh, to develop the methods of accelerating organic reactions in micro droplets. He has published research papers in high impact journals such as JAX, uh, Nature Catalysis, Angunda Shimi, PNAS, etc. Uh, now I request Professor Gnanamani to uh, uh, present his talk. Thank you, Professor Pedindi for your nice introduction. I'm sharing my slides now. So do... Just a moment. So, today, sorry for the interruption. Today, I'm going to present about synthesis of chiral molecules by asymmetric catalysis and micro droplet chemistry by utilizing them for the organic reactions. So, during my past from few years, I have chosen this field of asymmetric synthesis because asymmetric synthesis is useful for making chiral molecules. If you look at the advantage of chiral molecule, the chiral molecules are widely utilized in the case of like pharma industries or agriculture or food industries, etc. Here I have given one example, which is thalidomide. Thalidomide used as a sleeping fill for the pregnant woman to cure the morning signature shoes. This tablet was invented in 1953. Later, this has been administered to the people around 1957 in the developed countries such as Europe and United States. Later few years, they found that the newborn babies are affected with uh, missing their legs, eyes, arms like that. Later they realized that the thalidomide contains two enantiomers. Both enantiomers have different properties. So in the case of our thalidomide, it will be useful for the sedative effect for the morning sickness problem. But in the case of S thalidomide, giving the side effects such as missing their arms. So later in 1961, this medicine has been banned in the United States or other countries also. So few years later, they researched and then they found that this medicine also can be used for the HIV, leprosy or uh, kind of lung diseases. So uh, similarly, I'm going to give another one example, which is Aspartame. It's a commonly used as a sweetener 
for the artificial sweetener for the food industries. For example, these are the companies where you know they, they are using for aspartame for the sweetener purpose. Aspartame is uh, 200 times sweeter than routine sugar, hence they were using for the aspartame as a uh, artificial sweetener purpose. If we go for another isomer of aspartame, which is better in taste, just changing on chirality, it entirely its properties are changing. So hence the uh, our biological systems requires one chiral center than you know mixture of chirals. So what are the ways are to make the synthesis on chiral molecules? These are the following methods were available to synthesize the chiral molecule. First one is resolution. The resolution technique, we can take the, uh, you know, already existing racemic molecule, we can resolve the chiral to into the chiral products using chiral resolving agent. Here one drawback that we will get both isomers 50 in 50 percentage. So maximum we can get, we cannot achieve in selectively one isomer. So to get the stereo selectively one isomer, one product, there are, you know, after that few methods were introduced, which are chiral pole synthesis or chiral axillary or chiral reagent techniques. These three techniques useful for synthesizing selectively one isomer, but here also some drawbacks were came, which are required to use stoichiometric amount of chiral molecules as a starting material, so as our reagent. So if they are using chiral reagent as a chiral molecule as a one euclid, then no use of, you know, for them, it's very difficult to use in the stoichiometric commodity. For that purpose, in the next method invented the asymmetric catalysis, there substoichiometric amount of catalyst chiral molecules enough to catalyze the reactions. So hence this field has been further subdivided into three types of major like uh, biocatalysis, metal catalysis, and organocatalysis. In the case of biocatalysis, we may require to use, you know, um, biologically existing like enzyme catalyzed reactions. Here one drawback that enzymes are mostly in nature gives in only one isomer. If you want to make another isomer of enzymes are difficult, it's, it's not uh, that much easier. So hence, it's actually we can make only one, one isomer instead of another isomer. In the case of metal or organocatalyst, most of the molecules are man-made. Most of the um, catalyst are man-made catalyst, which are uh, used, which we can make in both isomers, then it will give the products in both isomers. Hence, I have chosen the area of metal catalysis and organocatalysis for my studies. studies. So during my postdoctoral work at Stanford with Barium Trust Group, I have worked in the field of profenol chemistry. In our group, actually, the aim is that using atomic economical technique to synthesize the novel and biologically active target molecules. So for that, we have designed various type of molecule, various type of chiral molecule. This also one of the molecule which we are using for the asymmetric catalysis, which is profenol ligand. The profenol molecule has been synthesized from proline derivative. The, the profenol molecule is not active. Then we, we add the, the two equivalent of diethyl zinc to make a metal complex. Once we added the diethyl zinc, the, the dinucleic acid is more active, which is one, one zinc will act as a basic Crater and then another zinc will act as a acidic in nature. So it helps to keep the both electrophile and nucleophile in the steric packet. So it will chirality will be transferred in the one chiral in the chiral environment. So then we can achieve the products in NSO selectively. So later to a few years later, we realized that some of the problem we are not able to solve diastereo selectivity issues. For that, we have designed second generation catalyst which has another chiral center, which solve the diastereo selectivity issues when we go for the, some other steric electrode or molecule. Further also, to enrich the reactivity, we have designed the molecule push-pull chiral ligand, which helps one side, one array is push catalyst, which is electron releasing, another side is electron withdrawing group containing. It helps for, you know, both electron reach and then electron poor substrates also. Using those type of mm, mm, chiral pro, um, profenol ligands, I'll cho choose the first one of the reaction is manic addition between butyl lights, uh, addition to the imine to get manic addition product. If you look at the literature, there are several chiral molecules, 
containing butanolite with amine functional group. Still, most of the molecules are synthesized in seroselective synthesis, not in the enanso selective, or some of the molecules are still not yet for, uh, synthesized in chiral version. So to, uh, to overcome these issues, we thought of making those type of molecules using our chiral catalyst. When we look at the literature, there are few reports were available, the addition between butanolite to the imines. This is one of the reports from Sebasaki Guru from Japan. They have done the butanolite with protected imine. They are able to get selectively excellent dinosaur selective product with uh, excellent dinosaur selectivity. But there one drawback that when they go for the butanolite varying from stable butanolite to unstable, actually this is the stable butanolite, butan angelic electron due to the conjugation, this is a stabilized butanolite. When they go for stabilized butanolite, they are not able to, their catalyst not able to depro deprotonate it, uh, so reaction is not working with a similar condition. In later, actually, Oveda group, they have published some of the amino acid catalyzed, silver catalyzed reaction with activated siloxifurin derivative. Here also, they, here they have to use directing group to get the vector and show selectivity. But both methods have some limitation, what on the what directing groups are required, and those directing groups are sometimes difficult to deprotect. And also, both methods require to use unstable Butane light system, not the stabilized one. If you look at the stability of the uh, uh, in the nature itself, always the alpha angelic electron it uh, automatically goes for favor for the stabilized one to the beta angelic electron. So hence we have chosen the our uh, catalyst to do the reaction with both isomers of lactones. When we tried with the unstable lactone in the beginning, we are able to achieve the product with excellent NSO and diastereo selectivity. Here uh, we, have, we have tried with various type of imines, which as uh, electron rich and then electron donating, in both cases we are able to get better results. Also, further we are expanded to the sterically crowded one naphthyl imine derivative. There also slightly dumped and dropped the yield, but NSO selectivity or diastro selectivity does not affect us. Further, we have expanded the scope to the etyrol imine or all kinds of yeah, unsaturated system containing uh, imines, which as the competition between uh, two uh, competition, one may go for the reaction with imine or addition may go to the unsaturated system. Selectively, our catalyst give only addition to the imine, not to the unsaturated systems. Further, we have expanded the scope to the stable between light, which is conjugated one, we have tried with very, we have synthesized various types of butane light. With, since this molecule is stable, then we can make different types of uh, conjug uh, conjugated butane lights. We have synthesized several molecules, uh, conjugated one, and we are, we are able to get both products, we are able to get the products in excellent energy and diastereo selectivity. Here, slightly the yield of the products were reduced compared to the uh, non conjugated one. Here, the reason we, we are thinking that it due to the steric entrance near to the uh, amine group in the chiral center, it may due to that, it may reduce the chirality, sorry, yield of the product. Then further, we have expanded the scope to the gram scale per, uh, reaction. When we go for uh, millimol to the gram scale reaction, the yield of the product or NSO selectivity or dash selectivity does not affect it. We are able to, though we are reduce the catalyst loading from 10 mole percent to 2 mole percent catalyst loading. Later, for, uh, so to propose the mechanism of the product, how we formed, so we have proposed the possible mechanism that the dinuclear zinc species will deprotonate the butane light, then it will form in a light, then further, it will add to the imine. The imine has uh, you know, two point binding with the nitrogen imine or the imine of nitrogen as well as carbonyl group of the oxygen will coordinate with the zinc. Then it's tightly packed. Then the stereo, uh, the, from the re, re attack, we can get selectively one product than another. If you look another possibility to get another isomer, so if you rotate this molecule to get another isomer, we'll have the steric class between these uh, are uh, methyl groups in the uh, in the rings and then the phenyl ring. Also, the lone pair lone pair repulsion between two oxygens uh, present in the butane light and the 
and the uh, you mean partner. So hence we uh, we thought that it may be this uh, this paper. That's the reason we are able to get one isomers in selectively. Since we have synthesized the optically active form of product, the many addition product, then further we derived useful functional group transformation to get a biologically active molecule. For example, actually under heterogeneity basic condition, we are able to make the lactam system, which is equivalent to the, which are closely related to the NCO1 antagonist. This has been, you know, currently using by the med company drug. This may, even this medicine has been recently synthesized in, in 2018, also in 10 steps. If we apply with our method, we can make this medicine in, four, in this drug molecule in four steps. So this is the one of the beauty of with our method. Also, selective red, uh, reduction of nickel boride condition, we are able to reduce this double bond without touching the CBZ group or any other functional groups. Also, selectively, we have reduced the uh, it's, um, so selectively, we have deprotected the CBC group without reducing, without hydrogenating other functional groups. We are able to get amine free amine product. Using the ASA Michael addition type reaction under basic condition, we are able to make chiral indenone derivatives with excellent dash duo selectivity. It's actually around 4 to 1 ratio. Also, we are utilized our product to do the Sonacera type of coupling reaction. Our products are stable enough to do the coupling reactions also. Since we are the experience in butylite systems, we have looked at the literature. There are several molecules, chromon containing butylites are existing in the nature, and those are utilized, utilized for the biological studies. Those are potential biologically active molecules I have given here, but all the molecules until now not reported in the NSO selective version. Most of the molecules synthesized in, uh, in longer step and racemic version, some of them may be re resolved using chiral resolving agent. There are few reports that are available. One I have given in Porco et al., who is working on chromon related uh, chemistry for the natural product synthesis. This work published in 2011 in racemic version to make, uh, first they make the benzopyrrolinium ion, which is unstable, then for the treatment with siloxifuron derivative to, to get this bicyl addition product. Also, it's only given the racemic version, not in the NSO selective version. Also, recently in 2018, the same group, they will synthesize some other biologically active um, natural products with non-activated chromon with siloxifuran derivative, they are able to make with the non-activated chromon still, it's in racemic version, not in the chiral version. Then we have looked at literature, there is no report available to make those type of molecule in an selective version. Though those kind of molecules are potential biologically active, hence we thought that since already our catalyst is deprotonating the butane lights, then we thought to screen with this reaction, when we screen the Michael addition type of reaction with chromon and non-activated non-activated brolin, it able to give the Michael addition product with excellent NSO selectivity, also with very good yield. We have tried with various uh, electron rich, electron poor, or uh, halogen substitute. And all the cases we had excellent dice two and NSO selectivity. Further, we are expanded the scope to the thiochromone or NCBC substituted chromon derivative also able to give excellent NSO selectivity, but slight dropping in the diso selectivity. Further, we are expanded the substrate scope to the stable butane light, which is conjugated one. We are tried with various substituted butane light derivative. We are able to expand the scope to the various alkyl chain with excellent NSO and diso selectivity. Since we have synthesized these type of products, which are you know equivalent to the which are related to the biologically active material, we have derived some of the useful functional group transformation. One actually like using nickel boride condition, we are able to reduce the double bond selectively. Further, Dickman cyclization, we are able to get this another six-member ring, which is equivalent to the blenolide. If you start the starting material related to that. We may make this molecule, this natural product in chiral version, three to four steps. But if you look at the literature, Casey Nicola group, they have done in 2009, 2008, 
in the studio so like starting from the chiral starting material they get the product not in the nmso selective version also the number of steps also higher nine steps to make that molecule but with our methodology we can make in the three to four steps also using the very very good oxidative condition we are able to expand the ring size we are able to expand the ring size also using the sodium azide you know symmetry arrangement we are able to alkyl shift we are able to make this kind of amide ring system with the expanded one without dropping any nso or dio selectivity also further we have oxidized selectively that uh, we have sorry, we are oxidized using segus oxidation we are able to oxidize this bond so then we get actually one chiral center without dropping nso selectivity since we have worked with various types of butan light which has tetra substitute chiral center so there are literature report if you look this is the one of the example i have given in the beginning thalidomide thalidomide has you know tertiary chiral center now the tetra substitute one due to that reason it automatically racemize in vivo suppose if we have tetra substitute chiral center it may it may not racemize inside the body when we take the medicine in, into our body in vivo itself it will racemize due to this acidic proton present here if suppose we make tetra substitute system we don't have any acidic proton then it may not racemize then we may not have those kind of problem earlier what we had with the thalidomide so if you look the literature there are several natural products containing tetra substitute kind system which are acidic tetra substitute um, carbon next to the carbonyl group or you know equivalent also it has you know regio selectivity issues like for example here we have suppose if you want to make methylation here we have the competition between regio selectivity issues the due to the regio selectivity issues it may go for sterically less crowded place not to the sterically in that substitute place so those type of drawbacks are there with existing method to avoid those issues without of utilizing our catalyst since we had experience then we have looked the literature there are few reports when the um, next to the carbonyl group if the carbonyl group is next to the alpha positive is activated there are reports to make in nso selective version when you go for activated to non activated system such as carbon here there is no report to make with addition to the imine if we have the carbon the real problem is that if we have the carbon we have the regio selectivity issues so maybe due to the kinetic reason it may the reaction may go to the less sterically in that place compared to the highly sterically in that place to avoid that reason what we have designed that we have proposed that if suppose we have double bond here it then it will block it may not go for the another substitution so then actually of course it should go for the another highly sterically crowded place so the regio selectivity issues has been solved if we have double bond it's so cyclic or endocyclic also double bond it helps to reduce the pk of this acid and then it reduces the acidity of this proton to deprotonate suppose if you have tetra substitute center here we have two methyl still we have the problem the acidity of the pk is very high so that's the reason we have introduced double bond there which helps for lowering the pk of this proton also not only the triple bond if you have triple bond it further reduces the pk then it helps for the enolization will be easier and due to we have the steric packet with our zinc profenol so it will it will fix the geometry of enol chemistry so since we have proposed that mechanism plan we have tried with i known substitute uh, various substituted i known derivative when we tried in the beginning we have tried with methyl substitute i know that time we are not able to get excellent uh, uh, excellent nso selectivity as well as yield wise very less then we are protected with phenyl or some other group we are able to get the excellent uh, reactivity as well as nso selectivity with optimized condition bark and cbc imines are given the better results we have tried various type of imines which contains electron rich or electron poor or heteroaryl all the cases we had excellent tissue selectivity sorry nso selectivity 
even when we go for bulk immune to CBC immune, also does not affect the yield or energy selectivity. Further, we also you know, expanded the scope to competition between imine and alpha beta unsaturated system. Here also we are able to do the reaction with selectively to the imine, not to the alpha beta unsaturated system. Also, we have expanded to aliphatic imines. Further, you know, China mild all the cases we are able to get better NSO selectivity. Further, the scope of the reaction has been in, has moved to the cyclic uh, system containing in the ion system. There, in those cases also we are able to get excellent NSO selectivity. We have designed this type of ion partners because those type of molecule when we do the triphenylphosphine cyclization, we can get the uh, spirocyclic five member ring system, which are potential biological active. Hence, we have chosen those type of scaffold also. Further, we have expanded the scope by varying the various type of RL rings. All the cases, we are able to get better results. To get another diastro selective product, we have introduced unsymmetrical to the R1, R2 and the R3 are both are different groups. Then we get another chiral center. We are able to get diastro selectively one isomer. With, uh, without wrapping any NSO and diastro selectivity. In this case, when we go for diastro selective reactions, we have tried with basic profenol, which we are commercially available also. We are not able to get better NSO and then diastro selectivity. Then we have screened various type of um, proline of profenol ligands that this time uh, trifluoromethyl compound has given better diastro and NSO selectivity. Further, we have utilized those products to make functional group transformation Using now like hydrogenative condition, we are able to make saturated system. If you think this molecule, we can make straight forward from this step. But when we try this method, we are not able to get even the reactivity also not able to. We are not able to get. We are not able to deprotect these protons with our standard catalyst. Also, we have tried with the LDA to make the LDA, um, to make the racemic compounds. We are able to get five to ten percentage of product in the racemic version, not the chiral version. But suppose if you use our methodology, we can make this product in chiral version. Also using the hydrazine hydrate, we are able to make fire soldering system. Further, we have converted into a pyridones using gold catalyst without dropping any NSO or diastro selectivity. Also, we made a spirocyclic six member containing spirocycle molecule also with 99 with excellent yield without dropping NSO or diastro selectivity. Until now, I have discussed with uh, chiral molecule synthesis. So during my postdoctoral period, I also worked at Stanford with Professor Richard N. Zer, who is working in mass spectroscopy technique. With him, I have um, done some chemistry. I worked with him for uh, doing the organic reaction in mass by using the mass spectroscopy technique, which is micro droplet chemistry. The micro droplet chemistry is nothing but ESI technique, electron spray ionization technique. This is the electron spray ionization technique principle. When we inject the sample into the mass spectroscopy, electron spray ionization technique into the mass spectroscopy, sorry, into the MS instrument, the sample goes to the ESI source. In the inside the ESI source, the sample will be charged. Then the charged part will come out from the ESI source. Then due to the, we have nitrogen gas that will spray the molecule, organic molecule. Then we will get the smaller droplets. When the distance between detector and ESI source increases, the droplet size reduces further and further. We are able to make sometimes naked ion also. When the, so then we can direct the product molecular mass. That's a common technique. But when we do the routine molecular, um, when we do the routine MS, sometimes we realize that it gives different product, different molecular mass also. Then we realize that it may be inside the ESI source itself while spraying time reactions may occur because the molecules are naked ion here, the charged particle. For that purpose, we are also designed for routine organic reactions purpose. If you inject the sample using syringe pump, we apply the high voltage here. When you apply the high voltage, the particle and the organic samples are charged. Then the charged particle will go to the sprayer, which contain, which connected with the one gas, uh, with the gas line, which will spray here. When the charged particle spray, uh, spraying here, then due to the coulombic interaction, 
rate of the reaction may be accelerated and then we may get the product. That's the plan we thought. With the MOSFET technique itself, recently we have done that just water, like water droplets, makes it disinfectant. Like uh, we can make the from water to hydrogen peroxide. This is one of the interesting product, you know, like if you look the mechanism, what we are proposing, the water in the ionic, in the ionic medium, yeah, here in the droplet system, you know, it may have water air interface, then due to the high voltage, it may be ionized, then the water may be split into hydroxyl radical, further due to the coulombic interaction here, since the molecules are very close and then naked ions, so they are due to the coulombic interaction, these radical may combine together and it gives hydrogen peroxide. So this is actually useful for making kind of disinfectant from the water, nothing else. Just we have to use the water to make the hydrogen peroxide. Also, we have done some of the chemistry in our group. The cyclo addition between these two partners, we are able to, so this chemistry has been done by um, Sapless et al. in you know, Nobel Arate. In 2005, we have carried out this chemistry. We got to excellent yield. When we try the standard reaction with our micro droplet technique with the machine, we are able to increase the rate of the reaction into the several fold compared to the routine bulk reaction without dropping any yield. Further, we also can make the nanoparticle. If you see the nanoparticle has been synthesized from the rm tetrachloride with the sodium borohydride in the IC paper in 2016, the same um, uh, starting material we have sprayed with uh, once one source has contained sodium borohydride, another source contain gold chloride, gold chloride, rm chloride, will spray using the using the sprayer. So it will mix here when the droplets are when the charge particle will come here and then it will mix here and then the reactions can occur in this place and then the then we can get the nanoparticle in the glass plate we can collect the nanoparticle in the glass plate using with our technique we are able to get uh, we are able to get nanoparticle in seven nanometer size also we are able to increase the rate of the reaction several fold. Also, this method, also this method is useful for you know, in the total synthesis. Normally, if you look at the total synthesis, for example, one of our group done by like Breyer in which has like normally 80 steps to make those type of molecule. Even here, I have given one molecule actually, it is Gambogin, which the molecule the, uh, synthesized by Casey Nicola group in 21 steps. Even when they do the reaction in 19 stem, they need to optimize the condition, various condition to get the product, some cases where, so in that time, suppose if they, have, if they do the longer linear step, they, cannot, they may not have larger quantity. For example, if they start with 10 gram of starting material, in the 19 step, they may have micrograms of the, this product, this starting material, and they may not carry out various type of optimization. Suppose if we have one milligram of sample, with micro droplet technique, we can do more than 100 reaction, which is not possible in the routine bulk reactions. So using micro droplet chemistry, we can make potential drug analogs. For example, if we know that uh, say, based on the SAR study, if you know that one of the functional group useful for biological studies, using micro droplet chemistry, we can make microgram level in various analog in few minutes. So that's a major advantage with our technique. Also, I have done one chemistry using micro droplet chemistry. Like this, the three component reaction in the bulk reaction, various group has been published to get C alkylation, indoor C alkylation product. When they do the reaction with the gold catalyst, sorry, silver catalyst or proline catalyzed reaction, they are able to do the reaction and they are able to get C alkylation. But when we do the reactions with micro droplet technique, without any catalyst, we are able to achieve an alkylated product with moderate yield, if you look the literature, then we look the literature, what is the advantage of this analkylator product? Those compounds are now quite unstable. Then we look the literature. This is one of the HIV drug analog, which has been proven by, clinically proven by Mere company. It's a currently actually people are using for the HIV purpose. If you look, this molecule contain this hemiaminal or aminal core ring system. Also, potential biological active molecule contains these amino systems, which are potential biological active. Also, here I have given another example. Several molecule contains, so similarly, several molecule contains these amino or amino amino ring systems, but those molecules are synthesized in longer route. 
For example, this uh, LBAS is synthesized in like nine to 10 steps. Suppose if you use our micro droplet technique, we can make it in fewer steps. Here I have given one example is, uh, you know, three common reaction with micro droplet. This reaction, you know, completed in microseconds to get under percentage conversion, though we need to get larger quantity, we have done for longer time. So if you look at the reaction time, it may be a reaction may be completed in microseconds and uh, we have collected in the flask and in the, then we have purified those compounds using column chromatography. The, the yields are moderate. Here we have given them due to the loss of the uh, loss of compounds in the collection chamber, it may need to do some more optimization to get better results or to trap the uh, to trap the organic compounds. So we have tried various type of you know various type of aldehyde or indole derivatives. Also, aliphatic aldehydes also we are able to get moderate yield. In overall, in the most of the, my postdoctoral period with trans group, I have done with zinc profenol catalyst. Using this zinc profenol catalyst, not only this, we have done various type of reactions. Whatever I have done, actually I'm going to explain here, like butylide addition to the imine to get manic addition product with excellent NSO and dielectric selectivity. Also, we knew that indole always go for the NC alkylation, C3 position normally is nucleophilic and go for the reaction. But due to the advantage of N alkylator product, we have protected the N BAC or CBC group, which helps for them to get the N alkylator product, not the C alkylation product. If suppose we have N sulfonamide, N sulfonyl group, we, we are getting, we are able to get only C alkylation, not the N alkylation product. We are thinking that this CBC group or BAC group due to that, the, Two point binding with two zinc, it helps for um, producing the N alkylator product than C alkylator product. Also, we have done the reaction Michael addition between butanolide addition to the chromones to get various type of chromon containing butanolide systems. Also, we are able to make sterically crowded amine derivative using uh, I known as a nucleophilic partner. We are able to get better NSO and diastro selectivity with excellent yield. Further, those type of ion product, further we are using triphenyl phosphine to do the you know, cycloisomerization reaction to get highly substituted pyrrolidine, pyrrolidone systems, which further reduce, then we get four, four to five, four chiral centers. So suppose if we have the ion as two acidic protons, it may go for the two deprotection, two protons may deprotect then, sorry, then it may, sorry, two proton may uh, remove, then it may go for double addition with imine to get pseudo chiral compounds. If you look at the literatures, there are few reports only available to make this type of compound. But pseudo chiral molecule, we can make diamine derivative, diol derivative, those kind of molecules, but literatures are very limited because to selectively getting these kind of products are very difficult because here we have another one competition that meso compound. So when you start this reaction, we may get the end up with the meso compound. That's the reason only few reports were available to make pseudo chiral compounds. If you think to make this type of molecule in the routine way, if we don't have I known, if it is saturated system, we have tried the condition, similar condition, we are not able to make this type of product due to the higher pKa of these ketones. So also it solved the reactivity and then regioselectivity issues. By just doing the hydrogenation condition, we can make the saturated system. While working with the desired group, I'm able to come up with some idea with micro droplet chemistry to do the um, to do uh, N-alkylator products in, in the uh, for the uh, for the indole derivatives. That I have to thank my PhD advisor, Professor C. R. Ramanathan. Without him, I may not choose on the career for asymmetric synthesis. So also I have done with uh, Professor Zayar and then Professor Trost group, both, uh, can, I saw, um, both chiral and then micro droplet chemistry. And during my postdoctoral period, Professor JP Mittal helped me some of the mechanistic aspects for the, uh, uh, for the radical chemistry. Also I have to thank my group members who are who worked with me in the, uh, during my postdoctoral period at uh, Trost group. So I want to thank Professor Justin Thomas for making this uh, wonderful event, baby session. So I will I would like to thank 
all our chem chemistry department faculty member members and then Fulbright Foundation. Thank you, one and all. If you have questions, feel free to ask anything. Professor Gyananai, it's Dr. Anuj here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. Hello. Okay. Yes, please, Professor Anuj. Okay, so first of all, thank you so much. It was such an illustrative and wonderful presentation. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, uh, my only query is regarding this, um, uh, you know, micro droplet methodology that you developed there. Uh, how easy would that be to uh, reproduce uh, in our department? And are you planning to do this? Planning to extend it here? Yeah, I'm planning to do that. Those type of chemistry further, because we have designed for our routine organic action purpose this type of unit, which we can do the routine organic creation. I'm planning to do this. Is actually, easy to assemble in the uh, routine lab. Okay. Yes, please. This also it's reproducible. The results are reproducible. Hello, Professor Anuj. So, yeah, yeah. So another thing is that what scale are these reactions being performed in this, uh, uh, you know, this technology? Yeah, here we have one draw. Like that's one of the limitations. Until now, we have like you know go for the larger quantity, but. For this chemistry, I have done with this, uh, you know, uh, routine laboratory synthesis purpose, 500 milligrams for 30 minutes spraying, actually. So if you want to have, for example, if you have 10 setup, then we can make 5 grams for in 30 minutes. So this molecule I have synthesized like around 500 milligrams of product in 30 minutes with one sprayer. So if you have multiple sprayer, one possibility there, or another option that if you have that, uh, you know, like if you have several, the wire, if you are connected, that's maybe, you know, engineering design, if you have connected with several sprayer in one setup, it may also possible to increase the uh, larger quantity. Okay, some sort of like flow cells, is it? This what yes, it's under process. Yes, we have tried, <laughs> we are trying still actually to expand the, you know, larger quantity. Yeah. Okay. Thank Here, you, actually, so you know, I, even I have given one example, actually, which is actually, you know, milk powder making machine. Normally, what we do, we spray the milk powder into the system, which will, which has actually, you know, high heat. So here, you know, the milk will operate and then it will make powder, actually. Same technique. Suppose if we have uh, you know, as charged species here, then we may spray the organic sample. We may get the product that actually, you know, one of the engineering techniques still actually we are trying in several points on that. Yeah. Right. That sounds very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Professor Nyanamani. Yes. <laughs> yes, Professor Pavan. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so I had one question. And yes, thank you for the very nice presentation. It was very nice. Yeah. And uh, I was interested by the micro droplet chemistry again, uh, like the previous uh, person. So um, my question is, do you know, I mean, did you have, uh, have you looked into why the acceleration is happening of the rate or why there is, I mean, what is the influence of the droplet? How is it influencing your reaction pathway or? Yeah, you are, yeah, okay. So for that actually, you know, like this is the sprayer shows when the droplet comes, the nitrogen gas will spray. When the distance increases, the size of the droplet will decrease further and further. Certain stage, it will become naked ion, like H plus and then OH minus. Similarly, the ions will charge, the charged ion will separate and then it, due to the coulombic interaction, it may collide from frequently and then, you know, then reactivity will increase. So for to increase the rate of the reaction, we need to increase the length. For example, some of it, for, that's also one of the optimization. For, so we have to vary the distance between sprayer and then detector's place. 
so if the distances are less then the uh, product yield may be less so when we are increasing the distance we may get better yield or better conversion okay and uh, my follow up would be that okay uh, i think you have two effects one is evaporation and one is concentration uh, media, i mean evaporation leading to concentration and then you have these ions concentration increasing so yeah. when you didn't apply a electric field what did yeah. you observe did you not observe anything no reaction taking place only just droplets evaporating if they were just droplets evaporating you are rejecting from the source actually i was sold for the only for the evaporation which i have done, told for the milk powder machine purpose but when we do the micro droplet chemistry it may not ever evaporate it's a droplets so but the size of the droplet the water will be surrounded with the organic molecule Yeah. then it, the reaction sorry the surface of the water the reaction may occur actually the, so it's a surfacial technique so water oh. may be slightly evaporate not the compounds then actually the size of the droplet size will decrease also when we are increasing the distance so the size of the droplet will reduce not it won't evaporate but some huh. point it may evaporate not fully actually yeah okay Because i mean not having uh, any heat okay that is that is very nice then uh, so my follow up would be that okay if you were to operate an oil water kind of a system rather than doing an aerosol I'm, i like the aerosol technique is very nice because you don't have to remove any solvent it already evaporates when it hits the substrate so it's okay. all very nice it's just as a blank if you do in a emulsion system like water in oil oil as the yeah um, yeah such a medium would you affect yeah. this would you expect these sort of uh, uh increase acceleration rates or uh, something like that yes we also observed some of the cases we using oil droplet already we have done it works okay oil droplet or water droplet in oil so water droplet in oil actually it's mixed together actually and anyway, in the oil surface okay. surface of the oil actually okay okay that is yeah. nice to know so these are yeah, interfacial effects you are saying yes it works you know like me uh, in the engineering chemistry they do that we are also tried then it works the reactions yeah we have some publication on that yeah okay that is nice to know thank you thank you thank you yeah hello sir this is vina here yeah please the question uh two basic question uh, one from your first uh, part uh, and second from your micro droplet chemistry my first question is uh, i'm wondering why the chirality of the molecule drastically changes the property of the molecule despite the molecule is same right uh, so where do you ask actually like uh, kind of uh, no so it's a it's, it's a very general question friend you are asking why the chiral molecules properties are different yeah like despite the molecule is same right yeah why it drastically changes the property of the molecule property of the uh, okay pro- biological properties you are asking correct yeah yeah uh, like yeah. the one you sh- uh, show this drug which is a sweetener and another other one is very bitter right yeah 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 you are right yeah so, so why the... this is so okay yes it's a nice question you know like uh, when we go for you know our uh, human body or any uh, living systems it mostly contains you know amino acid or peptide chain you know with uh, amino acid which has peptide chains those are in our body normally which has only one isomer our dna chain all those things mm-hmm. so then actually this key lock system if we have one isomer it will go and bind with our uh, dna chain if instead of if you have another isomer so that's a major reason actually so it gives one list uh, you know selectively uh, attaching with our body system yeah it's a kind oh, of key okay. yeah okay the another question is from your micro droplet chemistry which is very interesting though i have a question on slide number 27 okay the f- uh, the first uh, you showed the water pro- uh, hydrogen peroxide production from uh, water splitting right and the second uh, in this uh, the mechanism for this is the radical mechanism right yeah so what would be the mechanism of this reaction which uh, you already shown in 20 uh, 27 slide what is yeah. the mechanism of this reaction is this the radical mechanism or uh, uh, something else yes uh, it's a nice question also you know it's it goes via radical mechanism since we are doing the reactions in water 
uh, already we have proven that it makes hydroxyl radical. So that radical will remove the one radical here, and then you know it, it will be a radical mechanism. Also, it's not in the ionic mechanism also. And also, when we go for you know deep product, uh, what is that? Uh, removing this hydrogen, it's easier in the radical instead of this hydrogen. That's the reason we are proposing it goes by a radical mechanism actually. But still, so, you know, we are. Uh, some speculation and uh, some, you know, progressing in the mechanistic aspects, actually. Still, the, the is this, mechanism is not one bill. Ah, okay. So this is your speculation that uh, this uh, reaction goes by a radical mechanism, right? Yeah. We know that it goes by a radical, but how it's, you know, like uh, water droplet has several uh, radical, then how exactly it's approaching that, that we don't have, you know, real picture, actually. That we are trying actually, yeah. It's you know like recently started field, like couple of years before we have started this micro droplet chemistry at the Stanford. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think uh, uh, forming a radical on this benzaldehyde would be an easy task? So we realize that uh, indole radical, uh, indole forming a uh, indole with radical ion is better task, better option like that we realized instead of a uh, uh, ketone one. Yeah. It's a okay. Or ketone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. Much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Should I cannot share. Yeah, please, uh, if you have any other questions, queries, please uh, comment. Hi, Ganamani. This is Debasis. Hi, Debasis, yes. Yeah, uh, nice talk and uh, really very informative. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. No, no, Kathy. So uh, I just want to know, uh, you block to ortho position as well as the para position, right? Uh, Which one? And the prophenol, when you are using the phenolic yeah. derivative. Yes. So yeah. you block both the ortho position as well as the para position by substitution with a methyl group, right? So you are asking about the catalyst structure or in the reaction? No, 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 no. My question is, uh, is it possible that if you do not uh, block the para position in such case is still your catalyst will work okay so here you are asking in the ligand correct as a profile yeah ligand, ligand. Yes, yeah yes. yeah okay thank you more. yes it, we have done we have synthesized that type of molecule also which is like nothing you know here now methyl or isopropyl or no, hydrogen there actually those cases we observe the reactivity but nso selectivity was less but we are uh, speculating that that material group may help to get uh, NSO selectivity actually. But still, you know, that's also, you know, we don't have real picture actually. But uh, by the which, uh, aromatic yeah, yeah, if we have hydrogen, you know, it reduces it reduce the NSO selectivity. But we have that, uh, we have the reports actually with that. Okay. So, how do you think if you don't use any metal group there? Could you please uh, tell again? Ask again. Italy that if you don't use a methyl group let's say instead of methyl you have any group which one let's say starting from hydrogen or maybe any other substitution which is a yeah. conjugation like if you are using the nitrile let's say if you use the aldehyde or some kind of system so where it's really going to affect your catalyst activity yes with the nitrile system yes even it kills actually the nitrile the cyanide c and bond will c and will coordinate with the zinc and then it will kill the catalyst actually mm -hmm. so that we have already realized and uh, you know when we have electron withdrawing group reactivity is not good we have you know like with the isopropyl or without hydrogen sub moderate the reactivity is fine but nso selectivity is less okay, okay. yeah this is the you know, optimized finally we have time Decided. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I realized. That is the only trick they use for the catalyst development technique. Yeah, right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Professor Debasis. Okay, one of the questions in the chat box, uh, Miss uh, Sheetal Anujja asked about what are the compounds used in micro droplets and how the yield will differ from normal reactions. This is one of the questions asked in the chat box. 
Yes, the, we have tried with various type of, you know, e-means also we have tried. When we do the e-means instead of aldehyde, we are not able to succeed because in the micro droplet condition, the e-means are breaking. So some limitations are there. Those limitations we need to optimize. Uh, so some of them are there actually still. Or we need to change the PKA of the substrate. If you use buffer, it may change in future. Hello, you what, sorry? Okay. So another one question is that. Sir, sir, how much will it take? Mail down will it take? Sorry for the interruption. Uh, okay. Another one question is that how differ the uh, yield? So. Comparatively, the conversion is under percentage conversion. We always get the under percentage conversion. Uh, to get under percentage conversion, we always vary the distance between the sprayer and then collector place. When we increase the distance, always we can increase the conversion. If we increase further and further the distance, the yield of the product will less because we are losing a lot of droplets. So we have to, you know, keep moderate both yield purpose as well as conversion purpose. Most of the cases we get excellent conversion, but yield wise compared to the bulk micro droplets are less because of the, because of the, you know, escaping from the flask. So here we use the routine normal round bottom flask, which, you know, has another hole for the water air, air outlet. There actually we lose, but if we have a nice trap, it, that problem may be solved, then we can get a normal routine yield, you know, comparable with the reactions. Um, bulk reactions. So another one question from uh, from Bangalore Institute of Technology, so, uh, Dr. Chitendra. So how the um, how to purify those miso compounds and what solvent you are selected? So for the miso compounds, we can purify those miso compound and uh, uh, pseudo chiral compounds are different polarity. So, because they were kind of diastereomers, mass, so they need uh, we can separate through column chromatography. So, also, those um, for the reaction purpose, we have used THF as a better solvent because our zinc profenol, we feel that the profenol will coordinate another coordination with uh, THF solvent with oxygen that helps for our uh, NSO selective purpose. Most of our reactions, THF is the best solvent or to a metal THF. Other solvents are moderate. Then we have used the THF solvent. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Uh, somehow I am not able to see the chat box. Uh, if someone able to see the chat box, please ask the question. Yes. Uh, hello, sir. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, Tell who you who are who you are from there. Uh, I'm from Pune. I, I did my undergrad. Uh, sorry, my master's degree from IIT. Right now, I'm in Israel doing my PhD. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, what is the uh, like? Uh, how you manage to isolate the product um, when you are doing micro droplet chemistry? So, okay, that, uh, is there any other question or only one? Uh, for, I guess only one for time. Yeah, okay. So it's a nice question. Actually, we do the routine, uh, you know, micro droplet reaction. In the beginning, we have tried the reaction using mass spectroscopy technique to check the uh, reaction rate and uh, the time purpose. We have done the reaction mass spectroscopy instrument. But when we go for routine organic reaction, we have done the reaction using this kind of normal setup. There we have collected with round bottom flask. Once we have collected the um, products, you know, we have purified through column chromatography. We can purify uh -huh. those more. You know, it's a kind of routine column chromatography we can purify. Yeah. Uh, so can you uh, synthesize uh, the, the product in bulk amount or this is just limited to uh, uh, milligram scale reaction? Currently, we are able to achieve maximum 500 milligram, which I have told earlier, you know, based on the, suppose if you spray, for example, if you are spraying for, you know, half a day, example, two or six hours, example, 
then we can get you know for instead of 500 milligram we can make five grams or another possibility that instead of using only we, we are using here i have shown here one channel suppose if you are using multiple channel 10 channels then you know we can multiply for example 30 minutes we are able to get 500 milligrams in 30 minutes we can get if you have multiple channel five grams of the product so that's one possibly possibility for expanding the uh, you know larger quantity but it's not possible to make in kilogram or uh, uh, you know um, in the industrial scale but it's possible to make in gram scale oh okay okay thank yeah. you yeah thank you so much If there are uh, questions, please you know ask. Feel free to ask. For speaking purpose, you can speak. Yeah. Any, any more questions? Uh, no, no more, more questions. questions. Uh, thank, thank you, you Professor Nanamani, for the addressing of the a very interesting information session. session. And uh, 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 once again, uh, thank you, all the participants, for, for participating in this uh, session. session. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Professor Pedindi, for your uh, oh, nice, nice. Thank you once again, and uh, at, at this point, I'll uh, close the session.